GoodDate.now. My name is Nick Palanchar, and today we are going to be looking at modeling the Mongo way. Uh, this is something that uh, is really interesting to me. Um, it's about non-relational databases, a talk on Mongo. Uh, I want to talk about the different ways we can approach the uh, constructing Mongo models. And uh, I want to end with a practical use of Mongoose uh, JavaScript. So I want to approach modeling on Mongo because uh, the structures in the Mongo's data, Mongo's, uh, on Mongo database, they're, they're really complex. This is kind of a pseudo visual representation of what could be in a Mongo document. And as you can see, it's not like a relational database structure. It is not a table. It really can't be a table. Uh, there is nested properties. There's actually, in this blog, there's comments within posts. And you can kind of uh, structure these basically um, as uh, you can make really quite complex hierarchical structures that are like nesting very deeply into it. I'm, I'm an Aquarius. I don't like being held back by things, so I don't like tables. So being able to do this in a very complex way is, uh, is really exciting for me. Uh, so there's basically two ways that we can structure our Mongo documents. Uh, we can do it with embedding, which is basically what this is. Uh, as you can see, we have the sub-documents, these little title posts, uh, each of them can be considered a sub-document, and all the information is right there. You see everything. This is the entire document. All its sub-documents are there. All the properties can be accessed very easily. The other way we can uh, do it, and it's more uh, similar to relational database models, is versus referencing, where we have the same exact model that we had before, but it's very smaller. We have these kind of pseudo IDs, and each of these IDs will reference a another, another collection of, say, posts or subscribers. We can make this much more modular this way. We can get exactly the data that we need. Now, both of these are a different way you can do it. You can do it one way or the other way. Mongo will not complain either way. Uh, it seems kind of insignificant to focus on these two different things. They seem pretty much interchangeable. But I believe that these two distinctions, while inconsequential on the surface, they can end up having uh, pretty noticeable impacts on your application and even your coding workflow, if you're not at least careful about how we are constructing these uh, and thinking about them. So, so let's think about them. We have embedding and referencing. This is kind of the basic rule of thumbs for one or the other. Um, when a child data belongs to something else, so like, I am a parent, these children are mine. I am an employee, my access level, my contact information, my salary is all to me. It's not going to be relating to anybody else. That's a good example of embedding. Uh, in sub-documents that are small in size, it's very easy to bring these uh, documents into uh, the entire document model. There's no reason why we need to reference them somewhere else. Hierarchical structures, for example, if you have a, um, like a tree tri type structure, if you have a root file and it's referencing something else and there's a sub-document within that and that and that, where we would otherwise reference, which would take a lot of querying, this is just a much easier way of getting the entire thing. Um, on the other hand, for referencing uh, many-to-many relationships, that's a great way to do that. There's really no way we could do that as um, in, uh, there's no way we can embed in a many-to-many -many relationship. Uh, Sub-documents that consistently increase in size is a si situation where referencing certain parts would be very more useful. We wouldn't want the entire document every single time. It might be inefficient. There's also in Mongo, there is a 16 megabyte limit on uh, sub-document or the entire document information. So if you are dealing on a massive scale, you would not want to have everything in one document. Uh, this is much more easier to explain with examples, so here are a few. Again, we have another embedded document, very simple idea, contact information. In this contact information, this person, Bob Smith, these addresses that he might have belongs to him. This is really a one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, in this manner, all the information is right here. As a developer, we can access different parts in the addresses in one go. We don't have to query for multiple things. Uh, the reason why I want to do it this way for a one-to-one -one relationship and not say, uh, there's a, more of a structure if you still didn't get the gist. It's your document, your sub-document. The reason why we don't want to do it by reference is if we're going to do it here is because it can run into a bit of a performance issue. What actually happens with this array of addresses, we would need to populate by IDs, fetch each uh, actual document, and get it back when we want to actually look at all the addresses. What actually happens in Mongo is that 
each one of these addresses will require a singular query. So every single time we need to reference one of the IDs, goes into another collection of a whole bunch of addresses, gets the right one, brings it back, does the same thing for every single address. This can basically end up into a time complexity of O of n squared, which is probably something you want to avoid, uh, we, we all want to avoid as programmers. Uh, another interesting thing about Mongo is that saves, they are atomic at the uh, document level only. So if we are pulling a document and getting references and modifying things within those sub-documents and save at the document level, we cannot assume that our sub-document information is saved. We would need to build in additional logic to save those sub-documents. And in this day and age, programmers are just more expensive than computer memory because, well, let's face it, we're pretty awesome people. Um, if you're using references as well, a uh, relational database might just be better because uh, that's what a relational database is kind of for, like um, SQL. It is not really taking advantage of the entire, um, all the different options that Mongo has to offer. Uh, on the flip side, we do have passing by references, which is something that we've all kind of explored a bit. Uh, in this case here, we have multiple blogs, and this is a many-to-many -many relationship. If we look at the admins, uh, an admin can be an admin of multiple blogs. Multiple blogs can have multiple admins. So in this case, we can you know, point different references to different admins. We can basically build this out into a much more complex model, basically make it as, um, as complex and reference in as many directions as we want. So it's uh, obviously you know, just the easiest way to go um, for this. Uh, likewise, in the posts, if I don't want to take all the posts, if I don't want to look at all the posts all the time, there's no reason to get a ton of posts at once. We so can just have the ID. Once a post is clicked, we can reference that ID and just get that part of the document when we need it. The thing uh, with embedding, um, so that was you know, passed by references, and why it's better over um, embedding sometimes is that, well, uh, the properties that consistently grow, it takes up a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary data uh, that could be sent with each query. So like if you think of Facebook, for example, and we have three years of different wall posts, we do not want a whole document that has the entire three years worth of wall posts. We probably only want to be looking at like the first two weeks of those posts. If it was all embedded in a document, there would be no way we could really split it up, no very easy way at least. So referencing um, could be much easier for uh, that purpose. It's really a trade-off between memory and efficiency. When everything is embedded, there's a lot more memory happening. When, um, or when and when everything is uh, referenced, there's saving on memory, but it could run into efficiency problem if you're making multiple queries. So a good example of which one to use at which time, we have this basic e-commerce case. And uh, some things I want to be doing is have the users add an item to a cart. It's an e-commerce website. You have a cart. You want to add items to it. Uh, we want to have a cart property with the current amount of items in it. Uh, we want to have an order property with the previous items. The way I'm structuring this is the entire cart is going to be purchased and then moved to the order history. So we can just pass that sub-document from one spot to the next. Um, as a bonus, it would be nice to have the cart automatically created as a new user is created. Keep in mind the cart is going to have its own model, so we need to keep that. Um, we need to think about that as we're building our uh, program as well. Uh, it should be efficient with room for large-scale growth. The first idea um, might be to pass them all by reference, which is kind of nice. It's very concise. But for this purpose, I almost always want to have the cart. I don't want to be fetching the cart by ID every single time we go back to the user again. There's just no reason to do that. Um, in the other sense, we have it in all embedded, and it's much larger in its size uh, just by its text. We have the cart. I always had that with me. But we have this order history of all the other previous carts as well. I do not want to be dealing with that because we don't always need that, and it can really grow in size. Uh, so really, there's no reason we can't have both. We can't not have. We can just have the cart embedded, and then we can pass its actual ID in its order history. So to do this in a uh, mongoose schema, we can construct um, our main document model. We can construct our sub document model up on top. And by the way, these sub-documents, there's no reason why we can't use them as just any other type as a string. So for example, when we have here in the uh, cart schema, as a default, I am just, I'm using the type as the sub-document. And as the default, I can just construct a uh, just standard cart. 
This way, when I create a new user, a cart object, a cart sub document, will automatically be created as well. I don't have to concern myself with additional logic of setting that up and making sure that it's not null when I'm using these uh, two, different, um, two different methods. That's basically the basic, the basic idea. The main takeaway is you have these two different things. You have trade-offs between both. You can use them both in different ways. And with the added functionality of Mongoose, you can also use sub-documents as you can use other types and add other properties and options into them via the option object. Thank you all very much for your time.